and I'm going to do a deep dive into mortgages, mortgage rates, and housing costs and a lack of housing sales here in 2023. Is it a crisis? Is there a storm from the outside? Or are we just having a market reaction to the natural forces? See you over in Studio B, and let's dive in. Okay, all right, I found my board. All right, excellent. So what we're gonna talk about today is talk about mortgages, home prices, is there a crisis? Did something weird happen, like a bank crash? Or is it really a confluence of market forces? Let's go take a look. So, crisis or market response? So let's go take a look into this and find out what's going on. Let's start with some stats. First of all, this is what's going on. Mortgage rates have gone up, just as you've heard the last year, Fed in the United States was raising rates quarter point, half point, quarter point, quarter point. We make all the jokes about Jerome Powell going to visit the cheerleader, pounding the cheerleader, and every time he pounds, it cranks out another quarter point. So too bad for the cheerleader and too bad for us. The cheerleader is a metaphor for the US economy, unfortunately. And as you can see, what's happened there is the interest rates at the banks are about five, five and a half now, and that translates to about a 7.75% interest rate. And look, you gotta go all the way back here to before the crash. And they remember they talked about cheap money? It was 6% talking about those cheap money loans. And that's when it crashed from 6%. So when you think about the big short, you think about all the crashes, you think about what's going on with interest rates, it was 6% right when all that was going on, 5 to 6% when it was so easy to get a, uh, a loan. You know, uh, what was it, Nina, no income, no assets, and things like that, the banks were letting, it led to the crash of Long Beach, you know, crash of WAMU, you know, Ditech, all those things that went down. Well, it is back with a vengeance, and we are, higher than we've been since 2000. So that's why they say interest rates higher than they've been in 25 years. We know all this, but I wanted to put this visually so you can kind of see the peaks and valleys that brought us to today. So this is real. Next part, the home prices. And you say, well, I know about the uh, mortgage rates, BizDoc, but the home prices are the ones that are killing me. So let's go take a look at what's going on in here. You go back here, home prices versus inflation. This is the nominal average, right, for um, following inflations. Look at the home prices. This is up. Here's the crash, 2007, 2008. Come all the way down, and it bottomed 2010, and then it was coming back up, coming back up. And then we've had the COVID effect, which, and there's been a little bit of a drop on, on the recovery. But... We're 36% overvalued compared to inflation in America. In other words, regardless of inflation, what's happened to housing prices? They are 36% above what the nominal inflation would be, which should be way back down here. That's exactly what people are feeling. They're like, wow, it just seems like houses have gone out of sight along with inflation, and my income didn't keep up. Well, now let's go look at this. So. Point number one, you saw what's up in mortgage rates. Point number two, the adjusted home prices have gone up. You know, unless you've really been on a tear with your own income or built a business or something, home prices are more than a third ahead of inflation. And then, now let's go compare that to your income. Here's that same curve that I showed you that you, looks familiar over the same rough time period, but we're starting here to there, and this actually goes back to the 50s, take a look at this, housing affordability crisis. Look at what's happening. Wages were kind of tracking back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, there was a bit of a gap. They flattened out a little bit, but look what has happened here in 2020. The income at the bottom, the home prices at the top, there. When income doesn't go up, but the home prices have gone up, there's, there's your next point. It's like you're not crazy. It is incredibly unaffordable. Now, <clears throat> let's just do that as a ratio. Let's put a ratio of your income to the home prices and look what happens. Way back here in 1960, 1955, 
there was this been uh, about seven years home from World War II, so going way back to grandparents and great grandparents here, 4.69 was the number where it was. And this goes, this is the high when they've been measuring way back in the 60s. And you take it all the way through, boom, there's the peak in 08. It got to 4.34, 2006 peak, 2022 peak. Look at this. So you can see that basically, but for the drop after 2008 and after 2009-10, where the market bounced back, remember the stock market bounced back in 2009, you can see what's happened here. It's, the affordability is there. So the inflation, you know, people say my wages haven't kept pace with inflation. Well, let me tell you, housing values haven't kept pace with inflation either. They've gone crazy. So you're not crazy. Twice in the last 10 years, uh, 15 years, we have had all-time highs with a lull in the middle. And when we printed all that money and we devalued the dollar, it helped drive asset prices, and that's where they are today. So you're not crazy. The affordability index has never been worse. It's even worse than it was <clears throat> during the bubble where asset prices jumped up in 2006 before the crash of 08. Next we go, now watch this. Why aren't there homes to buy, even in a community that might be affordable? I find a, a smaller town or further from the city. Why can't I find something to buy? Because people don't want to sell their homes. Now this is complicated, but I'm going to make this simple in the next chart. Each one of these lines represents the market share of a certain loan. So we start down here with the sub 3% rate. That's a pretty damn good mortgage. And as you can see, the sub 3% rate, going back 13, 14, 15, 16, boom, 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 all of a sudden, the rates drop and people are refining. And people are refining at sub 3% because they, they heard interest rates could be going up. And that's exactly what people did. There is a race to refi here, and then it peaks and drops down because as we raise the rates, you couldn't get this anymore. So the reason it flattens out, it doesn't grow, is because you can't get it, and people kept it. So when it stays flat, those mortgages are not being, uh, what's called, um, uh, those mortgages, so, and as it flattens out, those mortgages are not being paid off through a normal sales transaction. You sell your house, pay it off. Now watch, now let's go sub three, now let's go three to 4% rate. Here we go. Again, it was down here. Pops up, 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 up. Now the 3% rate is 38% of all mortgages. So today, sub 3%, 23.3, 38, 50, 61% of mortgages are held right now are below 4%. Let's go to the next band. Now we go to the green, 4 to 5%. It was up here, uh-oh, let's refi! And they go zoom, crashing down. Now it's 19.9%. It was 40%. This went down, this went up. Take a look at the blue. They traded in their green mortgage for the blue mortgage. See the two lines following there? And then lastly, you've got, that's the four to five, five to six and six plus. You can see, remember, 6%. I was telling you, 2008, a lot of five and 6% mortgages. After all that madness, People are just refining or selling homes normal. There's where it goes. So now you can see, we're gonna put all these on two simple bar charts. Now then, 2023, you have got, as we go to the bottom, sub 3%, three to 4%, 61%, 4% or less, 81%, 5% or less. There you have it. And rates now, 7.5%. So if you've got 61% of them are 4% or less, and you've got interest rates right now that are 7 and 3 quarters or 8%, that means half of the mortgages in America are half what the current interest rates are. That tells you the whole story. These people are going to Airbnb their house, unless they live in New York where they just made Airbnbs illegal in certain residential areas. They are not going to get let go of that. 
they're going to keep making the payments on it. And the other thing that's happened, with even if you could afford the mortgage, there's some things going on, such as when that you buy your next house, pay a lot of money for it, more than your prior house, your monthly home insurance is bigger. It's a more expensive asset. It costs more per month in insurance. And more expensive assets. Uh-oh, here comes property taxes. That's on there. So it's not just about the mortgage rates. You also have people going, going, wait a minute. Even if I can afford that million dollar house, sell a 600, get a million dollar, my property taxes are going to go up. My home insurance is going to go up. So when the asset values suddenly jump and you're trying to upsize the home, you usually used to build in, okay, well, you know, I'll get the same payment, I'll work that out, save some of my money, put it in, sell a house, take some extra money, put it in a new house, get a bigger house. Well, guess what? <clears throat> it comes back to get you. Well, how do we know that this is having a negative impact on the consumer? Default rates for auto loans and credit cards in the last 12 months, actually almost 18 months, going to January of 20. Uh, 22. Look what's happening. They're coming up. Why are they coming up? Because inflation is pinching people. They can't afford it. And these people went out. These are car and credit cards being affected by the interest rates. So even if you're in on a sweet 3% mortgage and you're sitting tight on it, guess what? In certain jurisdictions, your property taxes are being assessed every year. So that means your property taxes are going up. Your, the car that you had to replace was a more expensive car loan, and the, credit, the rate on the credit card is up. And you were using credit cards to get groceries. This is all interrelated, all interrelated. So now you can see this, and this comes to us, standards and pores and experience, default. So this isn't independent research here coming from a think tank. This is from S&P and Experian doing their homework, showing us what's going on. Here's, and by the way, here we have that COVID and look, coming back up, four to three. When's the last time we've seen four to three? So right in this, as a percent, right in this zone, that was our nominal level. If this breaches here, that means that the fault rates are bigger than the historical high, which has hung around four and th three and four percent since January of 2013. See how that works? And then by the way, look at all the defaults and all the things that was crazy that was going on 8%, 7% on bankruptcies that were going on right after, the, here we have the ginormous market crash of 2008 uh, triggered by the financial bubble and the real estate bubble. Now then, so those are default rates on credit cards. So what happens if you default on your credit card and your car and then there's no way out? You call somebody and you file for bankruptcy. The, the good guys at Whalewire, um, pulled this together uh, from Apollo and their own research. But this lines up with everything I've seen, but I like the way they put it in one chart that was so clear. Our bankruptcy filings have breached this blue line, which is 8.5%. That was the peak. It was like 8.125% was the peak. I mean, 8.625% was the peak here in 2009 after the major financial crisis, the housing crash, Great Recession. Boom. We are breaching that level now, but it's also showing some momentum. If this gets up higher, this is very, very bad for America. So all of the headlines can tell you that this is bad, this is good, this is bad, this is good. But I will tell you, now is the time for financial conservatism. Be careful and be conservative, and you may be you know, renting for a while which I'll summarize like this. What should I do? The choices are few, but pretty simple. It's going to be difficult to buy in all but a few markets. Very difficult to buy. And you got to qualify for a higher rate mortgage. You may not even want to do that, which means there's a lot of grim pictures being painted by real estate organizations. Up to 50% of buyers are all cash. And by the way, there's only about 20 to 25 percent of the transactions happening that were happening a year and a half ago. So the activity is basically stopped in home buying. But up to those that are buying, half are all cash. Well, that makes sense. 
Mortgage rates stretch the qualification. As soon as the rate goes up, the payment goes up, and then you can't qualify. And finally, we already talked about what's happened to taxes and prop, uh, property taxes and insurance. Lastly, maybe it's just time to, if you're trying to get into a house, save everything you can, rent for now, and wait for the interest rates and the supply to change over time and make your decisions at that point. I wanted to dive into this a little bit. You know, we're seeing headlines that cover one point and people said, BizDoc, can you put it all together so we can take a look at it? And whether you're watching now or a year from now after rates have changed, the stories and history repeats itself and the trend lines will come back. So this is a time to be well aware of what's going on and just manage yourself with prudence. And don't be depressed about not being able to get a house. Sit back, let it play out. The last thing you want is to stretch yourself into a house, have your job situation change, or something go on, you wanna help a family member with medical expenses and you can't do it. The best thing to do is to basically be very content with where you are, find the best lifestyle you can, and save your money and reduce your lifestyle a little bit and just find your point of uh, contentment in the middle of it all. And so that's where it all comes together. Um, you need to be just prudent about it. And I hope that was helpful to you. I'm Tom Ellis with the BizDoc. I love bringing you these case studies. That's this one, instead of a company, I brought it all together in one place. And if that was useful, please leave a comment. And if you're interested in something else, Leave a comment on that too. I try to read as many as I can.